Now that we understand our refrigeration cycle, let's add some more examples. And this example is going to be low condenser airflow. Now these examples is not for you to memorize, it's for you to start understanding cause and effect. So you have an appreciation for how that refrigeration cycle works. So if we have blocked airflow in our condenser, it's gonna be the opposite of blocked airflow inside. So blocked airflow outside, we gotta think that the air is cooling the refrigerant off. So the air is keeping the refrigerant cool, we're transferring heat from the refrigerant to the cooler air is a better way of saying that. So as we're blocking airflow, now let's think about some things that would cause blocked airflow. What if I had a dirty condensing coil? That would do two things. One, it's blocking airflow, but number two, it's also slowing down heat transfer because that dirt acts like an insulator. We don't transfer heat very well. Also, we can look at the condenser fan blade. Maybe that blade's out of alignment. Maybe somebody put that blade at the wrong height in that system, and now the blade's sitting on too low, and now it's not pulling the air like it should. The height of this condenser fan blade in the shroud is critical. So if somebody's replaced that motor, that could be an issue. Also, the motor itself, the RPM of that motor, how fast that motor's working, is the motor in good shape, is the capacitor working well, all of these are gonna have an effect of how much airflow we're moving. And another one related to airflow would be air recirculation. Let's say somebody built something on top of this condensing unit, and now the air is coming out, hitting that, and coming back around. That would be air recirculation. It would be a very similar effect to it. And yet another example is gonna be something too close to this condensing unit. Maybe they put the condensing unit too close to the house, or they have something next to it that's blocking the airflow. So airflow inside is important, but also airflow outside is very important as well. So that blocked airflow, let's run through some examples of what we might see happen. We're gonna be cooling or transferring heat from the refrigerant to the air slower. So the temperature around this condensing unit is gonna to start to go up. As the temperature around this condensing unit starts to go up, that makes the pressure inside that condensing unit go up. So our head pressure is going to go up. And we also know that our head pressure is directly attached to our saturated temperature. So our saturated temperature go up is gonna be much, much higher than the air temperature to get that heat to transfer at the same rate. That's also gonna affect our condenser TD, also called saturated temperature rise, also called condensing temperature over ambient or CTOA. So as our saturated temperature rises, it's gonna be much, much higher than our air temperature. Let's say we have a design temperature difference of 15 degrees. Now we have a 25 degree temperature difference. Notice that all that extra pressure is doing extra work on the system. So our condenser TD is gonna start going up. This would be what we'd call a higher head pressure. So what's gonna happen next is really gonna depend on our metering device. First, let's look at a thermostatic expansion valve. So the thermostatic expansion valve's job is going to be to try to maintain the right amount of superheat in the evaporator coil, which is great. So it's going to try to keep the right amount of superheated vapor, which means it keeps the same amount of saturated. But what's important is our superheated vapor with the TXV should be spot on, which means our evaporator coil is gonna be okay, which means you're still gonna have a good delta T, which means you're still gonna have a good TD. Everything there is gonna be working well. However, because all that pressure is backing up in this side, we'll end up stacking more and more liquid refrigerant on our condensing coil. So a lot of times you'll see a flooded condenser because of that higher amount of subcooled liquid. So all that extra work's going against the compressor. Now on top of this, you're gonna see a much higher compression ratio because now we're having to build such higher and higher pressure on the outside, the inside's going to be the same, but now we're having to work harder to push that refrigerant out. So these are some of the examples. It doesn't cover everything, but it's just some of the examples you'd see with a blocked airflow and a TXV. That's also something that's gonna change with a fixed orifice. So we've taken a step back, and now if we think we have a fixed orifice, we have higher pressure on the outside, that means there's more pressure pushing against that liquid. So we still have our same fixed orifice metering device, but we're pushing harder, pushing that liquid out of that condensing unit. So we could actually see that our subcooled liquid will start to drop, which can give us a starved condensing unit. So we're pushing that liquid out of that condenser at a much faster rate. As we're pushing that liquid out of the condenser, where is that liquid going? Well, it's being pushed through the metering device at a faster rate. So we end up with more liquid in our evaporator coil. We end up with more liquid in evaporator coil. So what's gonna happen with more liquid in evaporator coil, we end up with less superheated vapor. So our superheated vapor starts to drop and overall we end up starting to flood our evaporator coil. We get too much refrigerant out of evaporator coil. So that's gonna be an issue. But also what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause our suction pressure to start to go up and our suction saturated temperature to go up as well. Now because our saturated temperature is gonna be warmer, it's gonna be closer to the air temperature. 
being closer to the air temperature, refrigerant versus air, our condenser TD is going to start to drop. It's gonna be now closer to the air temperature, so that's gonna go down. Now our evaporator delta T, that number actually is possible that that number is going to go up because now we have more liquid refrigerant in our evaporator coil, it's possible we're absorbing more heat out of the air and our evaporator delta T would go up. In other words, the temperature of the air coming in and the temperature of the air coming out becomes much farther apart. Now on top of that, you're gonna have the potential for more liquid refrigerant coming back over to your compressor. That liquid refrigerant could potentially damage your compressor. And then so we end up with our cycle starting back over again. So that's just an idea. It's just a rough idea. There's other factors, other design conditions that go into that. But it's just giving you an idea of how a dirty condensing unit would affect a TXV and also a fixed orifice differently. So hopefully that helps you appreciate what's happening with this refrigeration cycle.